Without Giannis and Trey, it was hard to predict what was going to happen in Game 5. Considering the Bucks got hammered in Game 4, you might think the Hawks were going to pull the same rabbit out of their hat. But Brook Lopez reminded us all that he has a little bit of that all-star magic left in the tank, and the Bucks were simply merciless in attacking the mismatches and weak links in the Hawks' defense, leading to an easy victory that was only kept slightly close by the re-emergence of Atlanta's deep shooting. So let's examine Lopez's career playoff high 33 points to see how he was able to score at such a high efficiency. After a hot start, Nate McMillan brought three new players in off the bench to stem the tide, so the Bucks immediately go after Gallinari in the pick and roll. With Gallo backing up and containing fine, there was no need for Okongwu to step up and offer help. That put Lou in the impossible position of guarding Lopez and worrying about Tucker in the corner. But holy bejeebus! I didn't think Brooks still had something like this in him. A standing jump, full extension, and one-handed corral. NBA Top Shot better make a moment out of this one. Drew Holiday was detonating as well, and we'll go to him in a minute, but let's look at what happens when he gets baseline on Chris Dunn. Normally, the lowest guy rotates over, but I like Okongwu being the help since he's longer and more mobile than Dalinari. However, Gallo has to now deal with a skip pass at the corner and the rare sighting of a cut to the hoop. Great find by Holiday, and Lopez again shows us next level athleticism with the right left split jump and slam with the right hand. If it takes Giannis sitting out to unlock Air Lopez, then I'm all for it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's remarkable how poorly Gallinari plays this again. It's one thing if you're late on a cut once, but on the next play down, he doesn't even see the cutter this time, and the Bucks get the same result. I don't think it's a secret that the Hawks are very mediocre on defense, and Trey Young's presence on the court doesn't really help in that category anyway, so Milwaukee was intent on attacking the weaker defenders all night. Lou Williams can't keep Holiday in front, forcing Capella to first shadow at the block off of Lopez, but then full rotate to stop the ball. Bogdanovich, like Alinari, is caught worrying about both Lopez and Tucker in the corner, but he should have just slid all the way over onto Lopez and let Herter deal with any pass to the corner. Instead, it's an easy layup. Then, Brooks started doing some real damage out of the pick and roll. The Hawks surround Middleton after he uses the Lopez elbow ball screen to the outside. Herter was in decent position, but again, gets caught worrying so much about Holiday 25 feet from the hoop that he disengages from the primary threat in the lane. Collins could have been there two steps earlier as well, and as a result, we get another slam dunk. I like this set. It's a double ball screen out top for Holiday going to the right. With the left corner empty, there isn't any help on the slip of the screen by Lopez. Okangwu has much to learn about positioning and spacing, as he can't let Lopez get this far behind him. But honestly, this happened so fast, I don't think they could have prevented this smosh short of forcing Holiday away from the screen in the beginning. It was truly impressive how well Lopez played a must-win game for them with Giannis out and somebody needing to pick up the slack. The Bucks got great shots whenever he's involved in the pick and roll, and it's the same effect I get when using my brand new Extra Wallet. Check how easy it is to pop my cards out and find exactly what I need in an instant, just like a Lopez lob. And it's so thin and clean, I get compliments on it all the time. I'm currently using their Parliament wallet. The premium, high-quality leather reminds me of traditional wallets and NBA basketballs. But they also have RFID protection against fraud and identity theft. The coolest thing is that if I lose my wallet, I can ping it with a solar-charged card. And if I lose my phone, my wallet can ring that. We've finally gotten to the point in human history where your wallet can have the fine looks and technological advancements all merged in one. And if you click on my link in the description below, you'll get 10% off whatever price you see online. So head to extra.com slash coachnick right now, get my special deal, and it'll change the way you wallet. Much like the Hawks need to change the way they gave up so many gosh darn transition buckets. One advantage to Lopez being isoed on by Herder out top is that if the Hawks miss the long outside shot, a shorty will be back guarding Lopez at the rim. It didn't take long for Holiday to throw the pass, and Brooks seals and turns perfectly for the layup. It was in transition where they started targeting the weak links in the Hawks' defense. With Bogdan back picking up Middleton, the ball isn't even slowed one step as he blows right by for an easy lefty finger roll as Lou Williams just stares at the play. This time it's Okongwu who has to pick up Holiday and get stuck in the mismatch, with Holiday just sidestepping right-left for the release from three. 
right at the start of the game, the Bucks get out on the break, and it's clearly open season on Bogdanovich and his injured knee, as Drew takes him to the weight room from the soft lefty half hook. While Bogdan did fine on this defensive possession, the point is, is that the Bucks knew they could attack him on an island whenever they wanted, and Middleton hits him with the crossover through the leg step back, and since he's got four inches on him, can shoot right over the top. It wasn't just Bogdan who the Bucks wanted to attack, Herder got into the dance with Holiday as well, and he can't offer any resistance away from the basket. Capella is afraid to leave Lopez and gets there late as they shoot yet another layup. It got so bad for Bogdanovich that Middleton was shooting one-footed lefty runners off the glass over him, and this was the moment you realized the Hawks had no chance. This time, the Bucks attack both Bogdanovich and Okongwu with the pick and roll. Okongwu will need to improve his drop coverage to handle both the attacking guard and the rolling big, and then read it so he can at least offer a challenge to this shot. There were all sorts of cross matches in transition after this nice rip by Bobby Portis and they waste no time taking advantage of the size discrepancy down low. However, the double should be coming from farther on the weak side by Gallinari. Instead, Okangu doesn't really double, he just stands next to Portis, allowing the easy pass and the strong finish through contact by Holiday. Yet another weak defender in Lou gets targeted in the switch of the pick and roll, with Middleton shrugging him off on the drive and step back, where he can simply shoot right over the ineffectual contest to extend this lead in the second. I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, but I want to give you a sense of the pattern in the Bucks' offense. Force switch for a mismatch, attack it down low, and the simple drop step to the middle gets Portis another open jump hook. Herter might have some impact defensively when the size disparity isn't so extreme like it is on Middleton. Bogdanovich is doing nothing, standing where he is, and Middleton gets away with a slight travel as the ball doesn't leave his hand before the left foot pivot lifts off the floor. But watch how he executes the spin move. The left foot plants early at his midline. Most players would take a much bigger step towards the right. As a result, Herter is caught sliding over to protect middle, but Middleton is already inside him on the baseline side for the wide open and beautiful bank shot. While this isn't the transition attack, it's rooted in the fast break off the nice Lopez block shot, since it instantly forces Herter to guard Portis. Part of the reason this seemed like a 30-point blowout is considering how many possessions the Bucks generated mismatches. Portis faces up and just shoots over the smaller defender. The only bright spot for the Hawks was their three-point shooting. After Game 3, I had accurately predicted that they wouldn't keep shooting 25% from behind the arc, and the last two games they have woken up, most notably Bogdan. After going 4 for 18 the first three games, He's hit 13 out of 30 the last two, and the fact that the Hawks outscored the Bucks by six made threes was what made the game seem closer than it was, particularly since they made six of those threes in the fourth quarter when the game was all but decided. They exploited the Bucks' defense to get open threes like this one, with Lopez crashing down despite Holiday already being in proper help position, and Middleton can't stop wrestling with Capella in time to close out fast enough. They run this nice double-staggered screen for Bogdan across the court, where he just quick fires on the catch when Holiday was a little too nonchalant chasing him around. The Hawks wanted to attack Lopez in the pick and roll even without Trey on the court, and credit to Lopez for outright switching this and picking him up beyond the arc, but he backs up under the very real threat of getting beat, and that's all the room Bogdan needs. So now we're left with a game six that could follow the same script considering Giannis is most likely out. I am still in shock that an injury that gruesome didn't yield structural damage. It's a miracle, really. And the way Trey Young hurt his foot and is still suffering as much pain as he is makes me worried there's something more severe going on. As a result, you've got to like the Bucks' chances to end this series, considering they have more firepower than the Hawks.